Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Uh, we're thankful to have been awakened yet again. This is a, a good day, a blessed day, a special day, a sanctified day. Mm -hmm. And we are rejoicing and we will be glad in it. Our theme for this week has been the word. Mm -hmm. We're talking about the word of God. And when we talk about the word, we're actually talking about a divine living person who lives within us. The word is more than just a knowledge and understanding of doctrines. It's more than that. The word uh, is living principles that make up one's character. It's more than just a mental set of uh, teachings and theories and facts. It may include that, but it's far more than that, and we have sought to highlight that this week. And so that's our theme, and it has been our theme all week, the word. And our subject for today is from eternity to eternity. You know, our God is an awesome God. Yes. Uh, when we know who a God is and what God is, we are different. Mm. It can't be any other way. The God of creation is beyond the understanding, the full understanding, of any created being. Let that sink in. I don't mm. care whether they are uh, beings in heaven, on other planets, beings of, uh, of high standing, it is beyond their comprehension to fully understand what God is and who God is. And today we're going to have another message that encourages. It's a message of edification, an exhortation, a, a message to uh, impart into us and establish in us hope and faith and love for mm -hmm. God, mm -hmm. confidence in God. It, it is for the purpose of establishing in us that certainty and confidence and assurance that it is well with my soul. Mm -hmm. Heaven is indeed my home. You know why? Because God said so. Not because I look so holy or feel so holy. Not because I don't trip and fall at times but because of God's faithfulness and who God is and what God is. Yeah. This week, we started off talking about the Word of God is a living person living in us. We started off on that note. Mm -hmm. Then we went next to the Word of God is the Creator. Mm -hmm. And as much as He laid out and rolled out the heavens like a scroll, like a tent to dwell in, He has power. To change and recreate me, don't you think? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> then third, we talked about the word, uh, and, and, and we talked about it in the context of it being given to us. Thus, we have authority, and it's authority over sin and evil. It's mm -hmm. authority over sickness and disease. That's what it's authority over. Mm -hmm. It's authority over demons and Satan, and it's authority over death. Mm-hmm. So uh, that's powerful to know, mm -hmm. especially when we allow it to become a reality in our lives. And then the word is the source of redemption. Mm -hmm. uh, those were words of edification and exhortation and encouragement. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, the word is the source of all everything. Mm -hmm. Everything we know and see and hear, even ourselves. The word is the source of it. You remember the word is a person. Mm -hmm. And then we talked about uh, the word upholds all creation. He doesn't mm -hmm. just create it. He didn't just bring it into existence, but he upholds it. Mm -hmm. It runs because of him. It functions because of him. And inasmuch as he can do that for the whole of the universe, he can do it for me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and he does it for me. Mm -hmm. And so today we're going to talk about the word under the heading or subject of from eternity 
to eternity. Let's pray. Our Father which art in heaven, we're thankful for your word. Mm -hmm. We're thankful for you. Mm -hmm. Oh Lord, impart your word into us. A source of life, strength, and wisdom. Live within us, Lord. Mm -hmm. The mystery of godliness. Yes. God living in created beings. Thus making them the sons of God. Mm. Thus making them a part of what God is. Mm. Oh Lord, help us to embrace mm. this. And then, according to your indwelling Holy Spirit, give us clear understanding of it, Lord. That it anchors us in you. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We're going to talk about from eternity to eternity. On our first slide... There's a statement there that says, with God behind you and his arms beneath you, mm -hmm. you can face whatever lies ahead of you. Amen. <laughs> That's so. When we understand who God is and what God is, it will change us. So let's look at uh, some scripture here. Let's look at Psalms 90 and verse 2. And what does it say? Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever thou hast formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. Even from everlasting. That, that's the amazing part. Let's read Psalms 93 too. What does that say? Thy throne is established of old. Thou art from everlasting. From everlasting. You cannot wrap, wrap your mind around that. Mm -hmm. From everlasting. We can say it, and, and because we understand uh, uh, English or, or, or we can understand language, mm -hmm. uh, we sort of have an idea of what it's talking about. <laughs> uh, there never was a time when God didn't exist. Mm -hmm. And let me just say this to provoke a little thought. You know, um, when the Bible says God is from everlasting, that means no matter how far you back up, mm -hmm. he was always there. always there. You know, I had a gentleman, he was going to explain to me uh, how time works with God. And he says, it's just like a, a spot. It doesn't go forward, doesn't go backwards. It just exists, okay? Mm -hmm. that's, 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 that's the way you, uh, it's, it's not a continuum. It, 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 it just exists. Uh, but uh, I have to respectfully disagree with that man mm -hmm. because there was a point where God did create his first creation. Stay with me now. The Bible says he created the things in heaven. Well, that came before he created the earth and mankind. There had to be something that was first. As a matter of fact, it says he created the heavens, he created the angels. Well, he had to create a, a place for them to be before he created the angels. So something had to be first. There is a continuum. And accordingly, there had to be God's first creation at some point. Stay with me now. Now, if we back up to the point in our minds where God created his first creation, let's back up a little bit behind that. Before God created anything, period, in the universe, because something had to be first. Before he created his first creation, let's start from that point. He hadn't created nothing yet. And if we start from that point and start backing up, we could back up for eternity. Because there never was a time when God didn't exist. Mm. What was he doing all that time? And listen, if you start backing up, right, from the point where uh, he hadn't created anything yet, you'd back up for eternity. You'd never get back to <laughs> the point where he created. I'm telling you, it's beyond our comprehension. Yes. That's the point. Absolutely. All right? He is from everlasting, let it alone. Let God be God. Talk. Yes to him about it when you see him face to face. Yeah. <laughs> and then he can help you understanding. I'm just trying to emphasize how great is our God. Yes. He, he's an awesome God. awesome God. If you understand who he is and what he is, it would change you. It would mm -hmm. humble you. The Bible says also in Psalms 106, 48, what does it say? Blessed be the Lord God of Israel from everlasting to everlasting. And let all the people say, Amen. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. He's not only from everlasting, 
but he's too everlasting. Now we can grasp that too everlasting a little more because we're going to exist with him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it'll never end. Yeah. Well, we can grasp that one a little better. Mm -hmm. You know, after a trillion years, you've only just That's begun. Uh, and we can praise the Lord for that. Mm -hmm. The Bible says, let all the people say amen. amen. Lord, let it be. Yeah. And let them praise, praise the Lord. The Lord. <laughs> that too everlasting. We're going to live a life that's comparable only with the life of God. Mm -hmm. It has no end. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Look, 1 Kings 8, 27. Somebody prayed this in a prayer, but it's revealing something very deep. What does it say there? But will God indeed dwell on the earth? Behold, the heaven and heaven of heavens cannot contain thee. How much less this house that I have built it. Here the man Solomon prepares a temple for a dwelling place for God. And he realizes that this house can't really contain you. As a matter of fact, he asks the question. He says, will God indeed dwell on the earth? The answer to that is yes. Mm -hmm. I said the answer to that is yes. As a matter of fact, when it's all said and done, heaven is going to come to earth. And earth and heaven are going to be one place. And God's going to rule the universe from this earth, and we're going to sit down in his throne with him and rule the universe with him mm -hmm. as part of him. We'll get to that in a minute. So, yes, it will come to earth. But he points out something. He says the heavens, you know, the not only the atmosphere around the earth, but the heavens where all of the universe lies and mm -hmm. resides, you know, out there where those millions of various galaxies are and one galaxy can have over 200 million stars in it or planets in it, and they can be a thousand, ten thousand light years apart. He says that heaven where all of that stuff exists can't contain you. And then he goes on to say the heaven of heavens, mm -hmm. where God dwells, where the angels dwell, is not big enough. Yeah. Doesn't have the capacity to contain you. Yet God dwells in us. Come on now. Mm -hmm. He dwells, in, he yeah. makes us his home, wow. his dwelling place. <laughs> and eventually, he'll make this earth the headquarters of the universe. And so, Jeremiah 23, 24 helps uh, prick our minds mm -hmm. and helps us to understand something. What does it say? Can any hide himself in secret places that I shall not see him, saith the Lord? Do not I feel heaven and earth, saith the Lord? Why do we do stuff and acting like we're sneaking around? Oh, yeah. Why, why do we do that? Mm -hmm. Go behind closed doors and say it. Oh, mercy. Go behind closed doors and eat it. Mm -hmm. Go behind closed doors and do it. Well. Yes. Well, well. Why, why do we act like we're hiding from the Lord? Can't hide. Can't run. Can't run. Uh, if, if we are bold enough to do it in the face of God, what difference does it make if we do it in the face of men? Mm. There's no place you can go and hide from God. God says, I feel the heaven mm. and, the earth. and the earth. You cannot hide from me. Mm. You ought to do what you do because you love me, not just because mm. you, oh, you can't be hidden. Mm. But at the same time, you need to know for certain, you, you can't hide what you do from God. Mm. What you doing hiding from man and you can't hide it from God? God? God is the one you have to give an account to. Mm -hmm. But this ever-present, omnipresent God is a wonderful, wonderful reality. Deuteronomy 33, 27 says what? The eternal God is thy refuge, and underneath are the everlasting arms, and he shall thrust out the enemy from before thee and shall say, destroy them. Uh, when it says, underneath are the everlasting arms, mm -hmm. that's of the eternal God, yeah. who is your refuge. That's what's underneath you. Well. <laughs> <laughs> the everlasting arms mm -hmm. may not feel like it sometimes. Yeah. It may not seem like it sometimes. Mm. It may actually seem that his arms are no way around but well, God said that's what we trust in yes, what God says God said. not what we see or feel or hear yeah. reality is what God says when he says that his everlasting arms are underneath you mm. no 
that it, that they are. Yes. And that all things are working together for your good, even Amen. if it's painful. Yes. I had a, a man pulling my tooth one day, and I'm telling you, it was terribly painful, but it was for my good. Mm -hmm. It was for my good. God says, I'm going to thrust out the enemy. And he's not just talking about uh, out of some town or off some job where you work. Mm -hmm. He's talking about the enemy that's in you. Yes, those yes. demons that possess us. Yes, those Lord. evil tendencies and propensities mm -hmm. and inclinations mm -hmm. that are in us. Mm -hmm. He's going to cast them out. Yes. He's going to tell us to destroy them mm -hmm. by submitting ourselves to the Lamb yes. slain from the foundation yes. of the world. By, by practicing what God says do, mm -hmm. you destroy the evil. Yes. The eternal God, mm -hmm. whose everlasting arms are underneath you at mm -hmm. all times. Acts chapter 17 and verse 28 and 29 says it even in a broader sense. And let's look at this. We're getting ready to go a, a bit deep here. What does it say, Dolores? For in him we live and move and have our being, as certain also of your own poets have said. For we, all, we are also his offspring. For as much then as we are the offspring of God, we ought not to think that the Godhead is like unto gold or silver or stone, graven by art and man's device. He, he ends up on a note, it's foolishness to make an idol. Yeah. All right? Foolishness. God is bigger than time itself, mm. than space itself. He's bigger than all matter. He's God. The Bible writer says it this way, In him we live yes. and move, move and have yes. our being. Yes. And then he highlights that with saying we are his offspring. Mm -hmm. When I had a child, that child was a Ryan, R-H-Y-N-E. That's my name. That's what they were. Mm -hmm. They were bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. Mm -hmm. They were what I am. That's right. Literally. And then the Bible says, for as much as then ye are the offspring of God. Now, if you're really born of God, help me, Lord. Yes. We're getting ready to go a little deep here. If you're really the offspring of God, you are what God is. I didn't say you're God. Yeah. I didn't say you're the eternal one. I didn't say you can forgive sins. I didn't say any of that. Mm -hmm. I said you are God's offspring. You are yeah. a child of God. You yeah. are what God is. <laughs> God is your father. Yeah. It, it moves out of the realm of the earthly mm -hmm. and the fleshly and the temporal. Mm -hmm. It's a new reality. Mm -hmm. You're a child of God. Mm -hmm. Originally, like like God like started off yeah. with yeah. one son. His name was Jesus. Mm -hmm. But through that one son, he plants seed in us. Mm -hmm. And we too become children of God. Amen. Jesus is our brother. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm going to make a point. God help us to digest it. Listen carefully as we end up with these last few slides. Because they are so important. I heard Elder Green preach a sermon on this one time. Mm -hmm. Let's look at John chapter 19 and verses 6 through 8. Let's see what it says here. When the chief priests, therefore, and officers saw him, they cried out, saying, Crucify him, crucify him. Pilate saith unto them, Take ye him and crucify him, for I find no fault in him. The Jews answered him, We have a law, and by our law he ought to die, because he made himself the Son of God. When Pilate therefore heard that saying, he was the more afraid. We have a law, they said. They're about to crucify Jesus, and they're given a reason to the authorities in their day. We have a law. This is why we need to kill him. Because the man said, I don't find any fault in him. What's wrong? I don't find any fault. I don't see any reason why he should be put to death. He hasn't done anything. And they come up with a reason. They say, we have a law. And by our law, he ought to die mm -hmm. because he made himself the son of God. Let me tell you what they understood. They understood that if he 
is saying that he is the son of God. He is saying that he is God. Mm -hmm. You see, uh, cows make cows. Mm -hmm. Birds make birds. Mm -hmm. Fish make fish. Mm -hmm. Men make men. Mm -hmm. And God makes gods. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I've just said something there. <laughs> he can't do anything less. Yeah. If it's from his seed, it's God. Let's look at it. John chapter 10 and verses 33 to 36. This is Jesus talking. And so we need to understand this correctly. Because we have people, great celebrities and all, who, who use this term that we're gods. Mm -hmm. but, 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 but they're distorting it, just like Lucifer did. Mm -hmm. When he said uh, he wanted to be like the Most High, he didn't want to be like him. He wanted to be in his place. Mm -hmm. He wanted to be God. As a matter of fact, he set that up before uh, Eve in a false context. And he will be like God, mm -hmm. you know, knowing good and evil. Mm -hmm. He was right, but he was wrong. He was using it to deceive them. Mm -hmm. Let's read the text so we can get some clarity on this. John 10 and verses 33 to 36. The Jews answered him, saying, For a good work we stone thee not, but for blasphemy. And because that thou, being a man, makest thou self God. Jesus answered them, Is it not written in your law, I said, ye are gods? If he called them gods, unto whom the word of God came, and the scripture cannot be broken, say ye of him, whom the Father hath sanctified and sent into the world. Thou blasphemest, because I said, I am the Son of God. Ye are gods. That's, that's what it says over in the Old Testament. Research it one day. And Jesus says, if them, if then, those who were called of God, and who have been born again, and who are the servants of God, if they... Being born again are gods. How can you say that I'm blaspheming? Now, I want you to notice something in the text. And Jesus is quoting the Bible. And he said, the scriptures can't be broken. Mm -hmm. Don't throw this text away. Mm -hmm. The Bible says ye are gods, but that's a little g. Mm -hmm. You go back and look at it in your Bible. Look at it on the screen right now. Look at it in the PowerPoint. Mm -hmm. That's a little g. Mm hmm Ye are gods. You are the children of God. The only God. father you have offspring. is the yeah. God in heaven. You are his offspring. Yeah, yeah. You're what he is. You've come from him. Mm -hmm. It's not talking about you're in the place of Jesus. You know, mm -hmm. People work, go down and bow down and worship you because you are God. And you're in control of yourself because you are God. And you don't need nobody else. because mm -hmm. It's not talking about any of that foolishness. Amen. Ye are gods. And if he called them gods unto whom the word of God came, the word of God is a person. The word of God changes you. The word of God transforms you. The word of God gives you a new birth. You are a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Ye are gods. That's what a little g. You are a child of God. That's yes. what it's saying. Yes. You're yes. going to sit on his throne child one day. Yeah. You're going to sit on his throne. You, 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 you are partakers of the divine nature. Mm. God writes his law, his character, in your mind and on your heart. Mm -hmm. That's right. He gives you the Holy Spirit, the, the spirit that rolled out the heavens like a scroll, mm -hmm. and like a tent to dwell in. He puts all of that inside you. He himself comes and dwells in you. Mm -hmm. Ye are gods. That's a little g. Mm -hmm. You're the children of God. Offspring. You're the <laughs> offspring of God. Mm -hmm. You come from him. You are what he is. Help us. Lord, powerful stuff yes, yes. from eternity to eternity. That's why you can dwell for eternity. You are the children of God. That's why the Bible writer says, because he understood all of this. Yeah, Somehow yeah. we've lost sight of this. And the devil has muddied up the water so much. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And he has misinterpreted so much that we're scared of this, you know. Mm -hmm. We shun away from this. Mm -hmm. You see, uh, we are the children of God, and that's not us pumping ourselves up. Mm -hmm. That's God doing that work. That was his choice. That was his will. Mm -hmm. That's included in his plan of salvation. Mm -hmm. In order to save us, he made us a part of his own self. Mm -hmm. 
He made us members of his body. We are gods. We are members of what God is and who God is. We are members of his body, of his flesh and of his bone. We are eternally one with God in every way, in heart, in mind, in nature, in spirit, and in body. You're, you're the body of God. First John chapter 3, verses 1 through 3. What does it say? Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God? Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God. Yeah. And it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. And every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself, even as he is pure. Now are ye the sons of God. Not later. Not later. Now, we don't know what our new bodies will actually look like. Mm -mm. But we know that we're going to be like him and he's God. <laughs> we're going to be like him. Yeah. For when he comes, we're going to see him just like he is. And we're going to be transformed into that likeness, yeah. just like Amen. he is. We're going to share his throne with him. The Bible writer says, what manner of love yeah. the Father has bestowed, bestowed upon, upon us, us that we, we. fallen, sinful yeah. human beings, yes. sinned against God, rebelled mm. against yes. God over and over again, mm. that we, we should be called the sons, sons of, of God. God. My <laughs> goodness. Mm -hmm. Yes, originally I'm telling you there was only one son of God. His name was Jesus. Mm -hmm. But through the plan of redemption, God creates for himself a body. Mm -hmm. God creates for himself and brings into existence many sons. And Jesus is only the brother. Mm -hmm. He's the elder brother. He's the head. Mm -hmm. Yet at the same time, we are all the children of God, sons of God. When I say sons, I don't mean male. Yes. yes. I mean children of God, mm -hmm. the offspring of God. Ye are gods. Yeah. And the proper setting is true. Mm -hmm. Jesus Amazing. said it. I just read it from the Bible. Jesus says it with a little g. Ye yeah, are gods. Yeah. And the scripture cannot be broken. Yeah. You're the children of God. You're the offspring of God. Yes. You're his body yeah. throughout the ceaseless ages of eternity. Yeah, what manner of love is this? What manner of love is this? <laughs> Those who rebelled against him mm -hmm. are going to be made one with him. Mm -hmm. That's one reason why Lucifer is so hateful and jealous toward mankind. Mm -hmm. They are restored to a position that's higher than he ever was or could reach. When he told them, ye will be like God's, God's going to fulfill it. He's going to make us a part of God. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's what he's going to do. Yes. Lucifer wanted to be that. He coveted that but he, and failed because of it. Mm -hmm. And now mankind's going to be actually instated in that particular framework mm -hmm. on that level. He wants all of us to burn in the lake of oh, fire yeah, with, him. with him. And if we're not careful, we'll submit on some uh, plane and be present with him in the lake of fire. Mm. What manner mm. of love is this that we should be called Amen. the sons of God? Amen. Ye are gods. Thank you, Jesus. You know, God is a humble mm. being. I am meek and lowly in heart. Yes. You see, we say ye are gods and we, we think of some exalted, puffed up, and we, we, we puffed up and we blowing ourselves up. Mm. If we're like God, mm. then mm. we're humble and meek. Yes. We are servants of everybody. Mm. Self is forgotten. Wow. We esteem others better than ourselves. Mercy, it's not a position where we get Mercy. high and uh, puffed up and Mercy. inflated. And yes. we so important. After all, yes. we're gods. Yes. You, you, yes. You, you, you listen to me. I'm a God and I'm in control of myself and all that kind of foolishness. That's the devil's misinterpretation yes. of it. Yes, 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 yes. If you are gods, if you're children of God, mm -hmm. if you're the offspring of God, you're humble. Oh, Lord. You're meek. Mercy, you're lowly. You are servant. Yes, That's yes, right. Yes. You esteem all other better than yourself. You, you, you'll die for anybody else. Yes, all yes. others, you'll die for them. Yeah, That's the character mm. of God. Mm. Let's pray. Mm. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thank Lord, Jesus. 
We've ended on a wonderful note here. Yes, yes, yes. Make us reflections of the word. Yes, please, Make Lord. us reflections of God. We're born of him. Thank you, Jesus. We're the sons of God. Jesus says in the Old Testament, and he's quoting it in the New Testament, you are God's. Yes. Those to whom the word of God comes, they're God's. Little G. Mm. Babies of God, mm -hmm. children of God, yes. born of God, awesome. partakers of his nature, mm -hmm. partakers of his heart and mind, partakers of his spirit, partakers of his life, mm -hmm. and made members of his body. Ye are God, yes. humble and meek and servants of all, not inflated, not at all, selfless in every respect, they're children of God. Help us, Lord, bless us and keep us, and let us take this word to heart so that we reflect it in character. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise Amen. the Lord. Praise Powerful name. word. Yes.